Hi everyone, my name is Maureen Swizek, and I'm going to talk to you today about how company provided benefits have been affected by the coronavirus pandemic. The coronavirus pandemic, or better known as COVID-19, has played havoc with people's lives and left a lot of uncertainty in the world. Companies closed, school students started learning remotely, telemedicine became the norm, and stay in place orders went into effect. COVID-19 has impacted our everyday lives and influenced our social lives as well. As the U.S. economy struggles to recover from the pandemic, employers are looking at their company benefit plans as a way to cut costs. As you will see throughout this presentation, fringe benefits are not just medical, dental, and vision. In June of 2020, Mercer had conducted a benefit survey with 505 employers, and it was in response to benefit planning for 2021. Out of those 505 employers, 48% said that they were still evaluating their benefit renewals. 37% of employers were not looking to change their current benefit plans. 12% of employers were expecting a slight change to their current benefits, and 3% of employers say that they needed to make drastic changes. Looking forward into 2022, 98% of employers say that they need to expand their current benefits. 66% of employers say that they will offer some type of work flexibility. 63% of employers say that they will implement child care benefits. 61% of employers currently offer some type of mental health benefits, and 41% of that 61% plan to expand their current mental health benefits, and 89% of employers say they will not prioritize vacation, commuter benefits, and other benefits such as subsidized meals. What can employers expect to see differently in 2022? Throughout the pandemic, some individuals became socially distant, most felt more stressed and even lonelier. A lot of individuals became worried about their loved ones that they could not see. Maybe some people have elderly parents that they could not personally check up on or visit if they were in the hospital, especially if they had fallen ill to COVID-19. With the drastic change of people's everyday social life as we once knew it, the impact of isolation has played a negative impact on people's mental health. Employees and families have turned to the company's EAP, or Employee Assistance Program, for counseling just to deal with these difficult and unprecedented times. As the pandemic continues, so does the rise of mental health claims. There are some individuals who unfortunately have had a severe case of COVID and ended up in the hospital or even on a ventilator. There are also some patients who are considered a long hauler relative to COVID. In these cases, these individuals may be potentially off work for a while and may need to apply for short-term disability, therefore causing disability claims to rise. As employees value their time off, they are hoping that employers would grant them more time off. For example, with some employers, if an employee fell ill to COVID, they might have had to use their personal sick or vacation time to cover their time off. Now, employees want to take an actual vacation and they have no time available. Also, the request for telework has never been greater, as a lot of individuals are afraid to return to an office setting for fear of catching COVID. A lot of individuals have either delayed receiving routine medical care or were unable to obtain treatment due to the pandemic. Recently, there has been a significant increase in medical claims as people have started to return to seek treatment. Unfortunately, though, the increase in medical claims will carry over into 2022. With some of these items listed here on this slide, unfortunately, benefit premiums will significantly increase. Right now, most employers are in the midst of getting ready for open enrollment. 
COVID has drastically hindered the employer's overall cost in health care, and employers may see anywhere from a 4 to a 10% increase on renewal rates for medical alone. Where I work, I just received a renewal rate increase of a 9.75%. After I disputed the increase, I was given a loyalty discount for the month of December only. Our vendor reduced the, our December rate by $38,000. In years past, there was a clause in some employers' benefit premiums and benefits that their premiums fluctuated based on an individual's age. COVID-19 does not discriminate, and I have not seen a difference between older and younger individuals in regards to their premiums. What can some employees expect to see differently in 2022? Some employers who unfortunately may be facing financial difficulties may look to potentially freeze or reduce their employer contributions into the company's 401k. On the flip side, financially strapped employees may request a hardship withdrawal from their 401k to pay for COVID-related medical expenses. They may also stop their contribution into their 401k so they could have more money in their paycheck. Companies may add additional employee discounts, such as discounts to restaurants, computers, movies, and even gym memberships. Employees can also expect to see additional voluntary benefits, such as optional life insurance for employee and dependent, optional accidental death and dismemberment, AFLAC, and some employees may even be looking to change the amount of their life insurance policies or update and or change their beneficiaries. If an employee decides to elect a voluntary benefit, they pay for all of it at a subsidized cost through their employer. The employee pay all benefits are expected to play a greater role in years to come. Also, some perks may be eliminated and or redacted such as company cars and subsidized meals. There could also be a lack of personal touch from the employer. I will address more of this on the next slide. Now that most employers are getting ready for open enrollment, there may also be some plan design changes from the employer regarding medical, dental, and vision. There may be less coverage or different plans. For example, offering a PPO plan opposed to an HMO plan. The employer may also add or raise the premiums, deductibles, or even co-pays on the company's insurance plans. Moving forward, there are several ways that employers can administer benefits to their employees during open enrollment and still try and have that personal touch. HR departments can host a live meeting with the conference bridge that employees can dial into. These meetings should be about one hour in length and allow for a question and answer period. Another way would be to have on-site meetings. These in-person meetings should be shorter and more frequent. They should be held in a large conference room where employees can be socially distant. In addition, having a virtual benefit website allows employees the opportunity to log in from their desk or even from home. If not already established, there could also be a benefits hotline number direct to the HR department. This number should be active all year long. In addition, having a benefits email address allows the opportunity for employers and employees to email benefits paperwork throughout the year. For example, if an employee has a qualifying event, this allows for quicker submission of that benefits paperwork. Having a hotline number and a benefits email address allows for multiple avenues for employees to reach their HR department. So let's take a look at some healthcare trends. With the continuation of the pandemic and the increase in medical expenses, individuals will also see an increase in the cost of prescription drugs, especially with all the clinical trials and testings going on. Most employers are footing the bill for these high costs now but soon it may be pushed onto the employees. 
with some individuals afraid of going to their doctor's office for fear of catching COVID or because they are not feeling well and do not want to leave their house, telemedicine or virtual care may increase. On December 27, 2020, the No Surprises Act was signed into law. The law was designed to help individuals who may have had a non-emergency procedure at an in-network facility. However, their procedure was performed by an out-of-network provider. This law protects these individuals from any surprise billing. ADA claims may also be on the rise. On September 9, 2021, the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission posted on its website that the EEOC recognizes that long COVID may be a disability under the Americans with Disabilities Act and Section 501 of the Rehabilitation Act in certain circumstances. More information will be forthcoming. Let's take a look at how and why company benefits are impacted. The estimated cost for a hospitalized COVID-19 patient is around $50,000. With the pandemic, the increasing demand for new technology, and given the fact that healthcare is now in a place to demand higher prices, premiums are quickly on the rise. The Center for Disease Control has advised the general public that the COVID-19 vaccines are safe and effective. The chance of being hospitalized or dying is a lot higher with individuals who are not vaccinated. In agreement with the CDC, employers are encouraging everyone to get vaccinated. This will help in keeping individuals out of the hospital. Some things that employers are looking to do to help cut costs are in these next couple of slides. In Joan Stevenson's article about private insurance, insurers no longer waiving out-of-pocket costs, she referenced Delta Airlines. Delta Airlines has taken a stance against employees who cho choose not to be vaccinated. Starting September 12, 2021, the company implemented a mask mandate on unvaccinated employees. In addition, the unvaccinated employees will need to undergo weekly COVID testing while cases are high. And starting November 1st, 2021, Delta is implementing a $200 health insurance premium per month for unvaccinated employees. Since these restrictions were announced on August 25th, 2021, the company has seen a spike in the number of employees getting vaccinated. Louisiana's largest healthcare system, Auctioner Health, has given their employees a deadline to be vaccinated. Employees must be vaccinated by October 29th to remain employed. Starting January 1st, 2022, Auctioner Health will charge a $200 monthly premium if a spouse or domestic partner covered under an Auctioner Health plan is not fully vaccinated. As the pandemic continues to evolve, more mandates and surcharges are expected with other employers, such as Alaska Airlines, Frontier Airlines, Hawaiian Airlines, and even United Airlines. So what are employees sacrificing? According to the website WeWork Companies Incorporated, they found that some benefits, there are some benefits that employees are willing to forgo and they include big ones like health care coverage, cash bonuses, and even paid time off. 64% of employees say that they would pay for access to an office space. 48% of that 64% say that they would be willing to pay more than $300 per month to have an office space. 75% say that they would give up at least one benefit or perk to choose where they would like to work. 76% of employers say that they are likely to give their employees a stipend to work from home or a co-working space. 79% of employers will let their employees split their time between corporate offices and remote working. In the end, it's all about location, location, location.